Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here at Drawings in a Drawer. Um, today we're going to talk about lips, how to draw them. I won't be spending much time on how to draw the lips actually because it's more like how to paint the lips but I will teach you a uh, give you a tip and that is you can conceive the lips as let's see as three balls two small balls on the top and one larger ball, ball on the lower lip this will help you kind of get an idea of the shape of the lip and if you then flesh the lip out from this basic shape then it will make things easier for you always try and be symmetrical because usually lips are usually most parts of our anatomy in the face especially of our features are symmetrical. Another trick is to draw two dots and then join them with a line and that will and then flesh your lip around that. Lips can be finer, lips can be fuller, lips can be darker or lighter, they can have makeup on them, they can have they can be nude or whatever. They can be parted, they can be let's okay, let's cut it out. Um, I have gone over this voiceover uh, like three times interrupted by phone calls, children, and also the video. I strongly apologize for this, but you will see my head poking in the in the video. Yeah. Oh wait, this is important. I have to tell you, the colors I am using for this are Naples Yellow Red, Rose Doré by Windsor & Newton, Yellow Orchid, Caput Mortem, Permanent Rose, and a neutral tint. If you don't have any of these, you can easily go in and use any kind of yellow, any kind of pink or red any kind of neutral tint, which you can easily achieve by mixing browns and purples and reds or whatever. So I'm going in with that Naples yellow red, actually, uh, all around the lip and over the border of the lip. And then I'm going in with Rose Doré, which as you can see is a quite light rose, but I think that a watered down red mixed with yellow would achieve more or less the same uh, hue. And I'm going in over that uh, Naples yellow and layering down, getting my, my first layer down. Don't worry too much if the colour spreads beyond the border of the lips, because the look we're going for here is an expressive lick, <laughs> lip, sorry, <laughs> an expressive lip, which will also look realistic in a way. Uh, and also, lips outlines are never harsh or too defined, and if you paint them that way or draw them that way, they're simply not going to look very realistic, but they're going to look cartoonish. So I am leaving white highlights on the bottom lip, because we very often, almost always have highlights on our bottom lip, because it tends to protrude. So the way, what I'm doing, how am I doing this? I'm doing this by leaving the, the natural white of the paper showing through. So I'm just being careful about not going over that area with my paintbrush. I'm now going over that initial layer with a mix of permanent rose and rose doré. And I probably have some yellow ochre in there too. I honestly cannot remember when I added colours in the mix, but it was always and only the colours that I showed you and that I will be placing to the left of the drawing of the painting in a while. For the inside of the mouth, I am using a mix of caput mortem, which is a kind of browny, purpley colour and the neutral tint and as I said the neutral tint is in this case quite similar to a Payne's grey. I would strongly advise you against using black in general in watercolour paintings and especially when you're drawing the human uh, anatomy or the features because it just doesn't look very natural. I maybe possibly would only use it for the pupil but I very often don't use it for that either. Uh, something else, the teeth are not white. Newsflash, the teeth are not white. So you need to go over them with a watered down version of the colour you are using to fill in the gap, uh, the inside of the mouth. Now, every time that you are happy with a layer you've put down, be sure to let it dry before you go in with your next layer or to use a heat gun, which is what you see me using in this video, or a regular hair dryer. Because if you go in with your next layer, when the one below is still, when, when the one underneath is still wet, the paint will spread all over the place. And you can usually fix that with dabbing it up with some kitchen paper, which I'm sure you have in your household. Uh, but if you let it dry too much, then you won't be able to fix it at all. And we all know that watercolour is an unforgiving medium, so try to avoid that. 
Uh, so yeah, you can see me going in with that heat gun and you can see a lot of my head in this video, which I apologise for and it keeps coming in and yeah, uh, last time I did that as well because I've changed the angle of my camera and I forgot about that. Yet again, I'm so sorry. So I'm darkening uh, the areas of the lip which are closer to the opening of the lip because they are usually darker because they are not as protruding as the rest of the lip. Areas where I usually hit by highlights are the centre of the bottom lip and the cupid's bow. Um, yeah, I'm just showing you there that I'm going in with a smaller detailed brush with a mixture of Caput Morton and that um, neutral tint at the end of the little piece of paper where I've swatched my colours to add shadows to the area of the lip closer to the opening of the mouth, as I was saying earlier. And then I'm going in with... Um, uh, with some Naples yellow red to the top lip, trying to get some of that highlight in there. Um, what else was I saying? Something that I stopped saying, yeah, about my head being in the way a lot. Guys, I'm so sorry about that. I'll get better at this, I promise. Well, hopefully I will, otherwise you'll just have to bear with me or unfollow me or, or unsubscribe or whatever. But please don't, please don't unsubscribe. In fact, please do subscribe and do like because that way you will support this channel and you will help me, um, you will help the crazy YouTube algorithm, you know, uh, get me viewed or whatever, get me out there so that people can actually get to see my videos because I don't think many people's, many, many, many people know that I actually even exist. But I'm extremely grateful for those of you who do know that I exist and take your precious time to have a look at my videos and uh, hit that thumbs up and maybe that bell button. Um, so I'm going in darker and darker, closer to the opening of the mouth and uh, just reinforcing what I have already laid down, where I want the area to be white, where I want it to be lighter, where I want it to be darker. And yeah, there's also shadow underneath the bottom lip very often. I'm not sure if I am not going to put it in this painting, if I'm going to put it in in a while, but I think I did at one point because there's always a shadow underneath the centre of the bottom lip. Please do let me know if you would like me to do real-time, step-by-step, paint-along-with-me videos because I think there's not many of those out there. Narrated videos, obviously, which is going to be hellish for me because you can tell that I am not a very good na narrator. But if you're okay with this and you would like me to, to do longer videos, which you can paint along without having to pause too much, then let me know in the, in the comments box. Did I mention that the teeth are not white or was that the other voiceover I tried doing that uh, went to hell. Well, anyway, the teeth are not white, yeah. So remember to not leave them white, but go over them with some of that watered down, darker color that you're using for the inside of the mouth. Very watered down. You don't want it to be black either, of course. But a natural lip, a natural uh, teeth will will not be uh, white. Even if it's been uh, whitened, bleached, it will still not be completely white. So remember, Darker, closer to the opening of the lip, starting from the centre of the lip and uh, painting outwards, okay? So, um, following the natural creases and the natural shape of the lip, which is usually rounded, hopefully rounded. And um, making sure you leave those highlights. In a while, you'll see me go in with some uh, white watered-down gouache or tempera. Uh, why do we use gouache sometimes in watercolour? I usually don't. I sometimes use, uh, use a water... Da oh God, I sometimes use, sorry, a uh, white gel pen. In this case, for the first time, I had a, um, a set of uh, gouache um, pans, jelly pe gouache it's called. So I used some of that watered down and I went over to reinforce the highlights because you cannot do that with watercolour. If you are a beginner in watercolours, you will know that uh, white watercolour won't achieve highlights because it is just too uh, transparent. Whereas gouache is fa far more opaque and it's much easier to get your highlights in there with that. I hope this has been useful to you um, and I hope that um, I've given you some pieces of, the, of information that you can take away from this uh, and that my voiceover wasn't as bad as it is sounding right now. But uh, I took the time while my kid was sleeping to uh, do this and I am definitely not going to do it for like uh, 
the tenth time. Um, let me know if you think I should script my uh, voiceovers. That will take me ages, but if it has to be done, I am willing to do it. So this is it, guys. Uh, thank you if you followed this whole video. And uh, hope you can like and subscribe. And I'll be posting a video every Friday. Uh, bye for now.